In the vast landscape of Hollywood, few figures stand as enduring symbols of versatility and charm quite like Rick Moranis. The question of what qualities have rendered him an everlasting icon in the industry is not easily answered. Perhaps it's his innate ability to seamlessly transition between comedic genius and heartfelt sincerity. Morani's career is a tapestry woven with legendary works, making it challenging to pinpoint a single defining moment. Yet, if one were to distill his impact, it might be found in the timeless laughter induced by his roles in classics like Ghostbusters and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. As we reflect on the breadth of Morani's career, it's inevitable that personal memories and cherished experiences come to mind. Whether it's recalling his endearing portrayal of Seymour in Little Shop of Horrors, or the hilarious antics in Spaceballs, each viewer holds a unique connection to this classic Hollywood actor. We invite you to share your most cherished memories or personal experiences related to Rick Moranis in the comments below. Your stories add depth to the collective appreciation for an artist who has left an indelible mark on the entertainment landscape. Now, let's delve into some random facts about Rick Moranis, shedding light on lesser-known facets of his life and career. Did you know that Moranis initially pursued a career in radio before finding his comedic calling on the screen? These intriguing details offer a glimpse into the multifaceted persona of an actor who has earned his place in the annals of Hollywood history. Your memories and insights contribute to the rich tapestry of appreciation for Rick Moranis, reminding us of the lasting impact he has had on the world of entertainment. Share your stories below and let's celebrate the timeless charm of this classic Hollywood actor together. Rick Moranis, a well-known actor and comedian, co-created the iconic characters Bob and Doug McKenzie as a protest against Canadian content regulations. Originally conceived as a satire on negative Canadian stereotypes, the sketches gained immense popularity, even making their way into the American version of SCTV. Moranis and his collaborator Dave Thomas were honored with the Order of Canada for their significant contribution to Canadian culture. Despite Morani's success in the entertainment industry, an unfortunate incident occurred on October 1, 2020, in New York's Upper East Side. While walking near Central Park, he was unexpectedly knocked down by a stranger, later identified as 30-year-old Marquis Ventura. The unprovoked attack resulted in injuries to Morani's head, back, and hip. However, Morani's displayed resilience by filing a police report and seeking medical attention on his own. The Manhattan Police Precinct's trauma team confirmed he was fine, expressing gratitude for the concern while emphasizing the importance of bringing the perpetrator to justice. Rick Moranis, known for his diverse roles in film and television, continues to be a prominent figure in the entertainment industry, leaving an indelible mark on both Canadian and global pop culture. Appearing alongside Bill Murray in three iconic films Ghostbusters, Little Shop of Horrors, and Ghostbusters 2 Rick Moranis solidified his place in cinematic history. Notably, his role as Louis Tully in Ghostbusters was initially intended for John Candy, but Moranis stepped in as a last-minute replacement. This unexpected casting decision not only reshaped the character, but also forged a connection between Moranis, Candy, and their SCTV co-star Harold Ramis. Moranis' contribution extends beyond mere filmography. Ghostbusters has earned a place in the National Film Registry, recognized by the Library of Congress for its cultural, historical, and aesthetic significance. This accolade reflects Moranis' involvement in a movie that transcends entertainment, leaving an enduring impact on American cinema. These collaborations and accolades underscore Morinus' versatile talent and his ability to seamlessly fit into roles originally intended for other actors. Beyond the screen, Morinus' unexpected journey in the entertainment industry is a testament to his adaptability and lasting influence on cinematic classics. Following his retirement from acting in 1997, Rick Moranis, known for his diverse roles in film and television, took an unexpected break that was initially intended as a sabbatical of a couple of years. However, as time passed, Moranis realized he did not miss the pressure of Hollywood. Despite the challenges of raising his two children on his own after the death of his wife in 1991, Moranis found a different path, occasionally lending his voice to projects like Brother Bear. 
This transition marked a significant shift in his career, showcasing Morinus' ability to prioritize personal values over the demands of the entertainment industry. His selective involvement in voice work post-retirement is a testament to his intentional approach to balancing life and work. Notably, Moranis made the cover of the first issue of Disney Adventures magazine in 1990, highlighting his connection with the world of Disney beyond his on-screen roles. Additionally, his collaboration with Steve Martin in four films Little Shop of Horrors, Parenthood, My Blue Heaven, and La Story underscored his versatility as an actor who could seamlessly share the screen with other industry giants. While Moranis stepped away from the spotlight for a significant period, his strategic return through occasional voice work emphasizes the enduring influence and adaptability of this iconic figure in the entertainment industry. Rick Moranis, known for his diverse contributions to entertainment, surprised many with his musical talent. Teaming up with Dave Thomas, they achieved a Billboard Top 40 hit in 1982 with Take Off, a duet featuring Rush lead singer Getty Lee. This musical success showcased Moranis' versatility beyond acting and comedy. Despite his private nature, this collaboration highlighted a public aspect of his career, offering fans a different dimension to the iconic actor's talents. Morinus' ability to seamlessly transition between creative endeavors adds another layer to his multifaceted legacy in the entertainment industry. While attending Sir Sanford Fleming Secondary School in Toronto, Canada, Rick Moranis not only honed his academic skills, but also forged a lasting connection with Getty Lee, the iconic lead singer of the legendary rock band Rush. Their shared background in this educational institution laid the foundation for a unique and enduring friendship that extends beyond the confines of the entertainment industry. In the bustling hallways and classrooms of Sir Sanford Fleming Secondary School, Moranis and Lee discovered common interests that went beyond their individual artistic pursuits. Their friendship blossomed not just through creative endeavors, but also through shared experiences, dreams, and the challenges of adolescence. The school days they spent together became a crucible for the enduring bond that would connect them throughout their respective careers. Moranis, widely recognized for his versatile contributions to entertainment, from his comedic roles in movies like Ghostbusters and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids to his musical parodies on SCTV, surprises many with this unexpected link to Getty Lee. This connection adds a fascinating dimension to Morinus' life story, showcasing the depth of relationships formed during his formative years. The bond between Moranis and Lee not only sheds light on Morinus' early life, but also provides a glimpse into the varied connections that shaped his journey in the entertainment industry. It serves as a testament to the profound impact that friendships and shared experiences can have on individuals, even those who eventually find themselves in different realms of the arts. In retrospect, the corridors of Sir Sanford Fleming Secondary School in Toronto were not just pathways for academic growth. They were the birthplace of a friendship that transcended expectations and stereotypes, bridging the worlds of comedy and rock. This unexpected link between Rick Moranis and Getty Lee serves as a poignant reminder that the most enduring connections often originate in the most unlikely places. As we bid adieu to this cinematic journey celebrating the unparalleled talent of actor Rick Moranis, let the curtain fall not on the screen, but on the stage of your memories. Take a moment to traverse the corridors of nostalgia, where Moranis has left an indelible mark with his impeccable performances. In this vast tapestry of entertainment, Moranis' roles resonate like familiar chords, striking a chord in the symphony of our shared experiences. Perhaps you found solace in his comedic brilliance, or maybe his endearing characters became companions in the theater of your life. Now, as the credits roll, we invite you to share your cherished reflections. What scenes linger in your mind like a well-written stanza, and which characters dance through the corridors of your imagination? Your thoughts are the encore to Morani's cinematic legacy, adding layers to the story that transcends the silver screen. As we close this chapter, let the echoes of your memories be a testament to the profound impact of Rick Morani's on the world of entertainment. His contributions are not mere frames frozen in time. They are the brushstrokes that color our collective consciousness. Thank you for joining us in this celebration of a remarkable talent. Your participation, your memories, are the standing ovation to a career that has touched hearts across generations. Until the lights dim again, keep the stories alive in the corridors of your own narrative.
appreciatively the narrative weavers.